Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm Thomas Thwaites. Uh, I graduated from the Royal College of Art Design Interactions program last year. And uh, I'm going to tell you about my uh, graduation work, which was called the Toaster Project. Um, and it began with the kind of simple observation that uh, you know, much of what surrounds us these days kind of started life as rocks or sludge buried in a hole in the ground somewhere in the world. Um, of course, it doesn't look like that anymore. It looks like giant fat screen TVs, projectors, uh, you know, monitors, and of course, toasters. So I thought I would try and uh, get to the bottom of this sort of magical transformation. Uh, the project was also inspired by this quote from The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, the situation it describes kind of stuck with me, um, you know, from when I read it when I was young. And, uh, and uh, this, the hero is on a strange planet uh, and populated by just a kind of a primitive, technologically primitive people um, and thinks that he'll be able to kind of amaze them with his godlike command of nature but soon realises that without the rest of human society, uh, he can just about make a sandwich. Um, <clears throat> so I thought I would try and make a toaster starting from scratch and working on the basis that the cheapest toaster would also be the simplest. I went and bought the cheapest toaster I could find, which was £3.50 from a shop called Argos, which is about 55 rand, I think, and uh, took it apart. Uh, reverse engineered it and uh, was kind of dismayed to discover that there were, you know, this £3.50 device was made up of about 400 different bits. And, uh, and even more unfortunate for my project was the fact that these bits consisted of about 100 different materials. I thought I would start with uh, five. Uh, so <laughs> steel, um, mica, um, that's the bit which the element is wrapped around, plastic for the all-important case, uh, copper and nickel for the element. Um, so steel, steel comes from iron. Um, I phoned up an iron mine in Wales, spoke to Ray there, and uh, he said, come up. Uh, when, <laughs> when I actually got there, it emerged that he'd misheard me on the phone and thought I wanted to make a poster, which would have been, <laughs> you know, more relevant um, <clears throat> but nonetheless, he was kind enough to uh, show me round. Most um, ancient civilizations um, are prophesying that there's going to be um, a big change in the world in 2012. You can, when you study geology, you can see what's happened in the past in the world. Terrific changes in the earth. Um, yeah, so as you can see, this iron mine, it used to be an iron mine, but it's not an iron mine anymore. Uh, like most mines in the UK, um, they can't compete on the kind of, the va you know, with the vast operations that are kind of taking place in Australia, South, ha uh, South America, and of course South Africa. Um, so it was a show mine. Uh, um, Ray was a miner there, though, but it closed in after the Second World War. Um, so still, I was uh, able to get a suitcase full of iron ore. I dragged it back to London, and, uh, <laughs> and I was left with the, uh, faced with the problem of um, how do I turn this into something, you know, into a toaster component. So I did a bit of research. I went and looked at undergraduate textbooks on metallurgy. Um, the undergraduate textbooks were fairly useless because, of course, they were written for people who were going to work at these vast scales. Um, so I actually had to kind of go back to the History of Science Library and uh, found this 15th century book. And that woodcut there um, was actually very useful for my purposes. Um, so, yeah. Uh, instead of a set of bellows, which aren't actually available, around very much. I, I had to use a leaf blower. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so after kind of a night of shoveling in coal and, and uh, an iron ore, um, it didn't work. Um, <laughs> However, uh, it did almost work, and I was able to finish off the process in the much more convenient microwave oven. Um, to get usable iron out. 
Um, so the next thing I'd like to talk about was plastic. So plastic, of course, comes from oil. So I phoned up BP and spent about 45 minutes trying to convince the PR guy at BP that it would be fantastic for them if they flew me to an oil rig and let me collect a jug of oil. Uh, <laughs> They said they'd phone back. Um, so uh, while I was waiting for, their, for them to return my call, um, I thought I should investigate other ways of making plastic. This is making plastic from potatoes, um, potato starch. It was all looking very good for a while until I left it outside to dry, came back, and it was being eaten by snails, um, <laughs> feasting on my potato starch. Uh, so I decided I would have to think a bit laterally. And geologists have christened the age that we're living in um, the Anthropocene, uh, and that's because geologists of the future would be able to detect a kind of a sharp shift um, in the strata of rock that's being laid down at the moment. Suddenly, uh, there'd be a kind of a great extinction event um, that would become kind of radioactive, and there'd be new or sort of new molecules floating around, polymers, uh, plastics. So uh, I <laughs> decided that I could mine some plastic from the fly tip around the corner of my house. Um, but before I did that, I went to talk to a, a plastics recycling firm up in Manchester who actually deal with um, you know, the outcome of the WE legislation. Um, and, I was wondering yeah. if I could actually mine some bromelated flame retardants from myself oh. and put them in my taster. But, uh, oh dear, oh dear. This is carving the, um, the, the you know, injection moulding tool. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so there's mica, that came from a beautiful place in Scotland, which I can't show you. Uh, there's the toaster, uh, without its plastic case on. There's the complete toaster. Um, <clears throat> and there's the toaster for sale in John Lewis for £1,200. <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, if it's not the most expensive toaster in the world, it's certainly the least inefficiently produced and probably has the largest carbon footprint. Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you very much. <clears throat>